All right, let's get more reaction now. Joined by UDM leader Bantolo Mesa. That's score. General, good to have you, and thank you very much for your time. The last time I spoke to you, you said the investigative uh, uh, officers or those who are involved in the case would have at least given an indication that the docket would have been finalized in October already last year, but were told not to act on it uh, uh, up until the SONA. But it, it seems the investigations maybe might still be continuing, wanting some further information, hence the session search and seizure that we saw earlier today. Well, we welcome the progress made by the law enforcement agencies. You will recall that uh, the UDM uh, was the, the party which wrote to the Joint Standing Committee on Defense on the 26th of March, 2021, reporting to the Joint Standing Committee that uh, there are serious allegations against uh, the Minister of Defense. And we narrated the story, which dates back from 2017 when allegations were uh, uh, were said by the whistleblower that she has been asked to pay monies as early as, as from 2017 up until 2019. Mm -hmm. Well, the law enforcement agencies uh, have been investigating this matter, and I think uh, we should uh, allow them to finalize the last mile. Uh, that the last mile is for the minister to appear in court or, and not the minister, but the speaker is for her to appear in court, or she should just go and hand herself to the law enforcement agencies, and then we close the chapter. Yeah. Of course, the last word will be said by the courts of this country. So we are happy that at least this case is about to be finalized at last. So let's, yeah, let's, well, let's stay with that issue of whether it will be finalized at last because as you've mentioned, the, the, the case dates back to 2017, 2016 when she was still Minister of Defense and it, it said in some reports that bundles of cash would have been given to the minister on 10 occasions including those facilitated by the now late Secretary of, of Defense. Is it likely that the NPA is following a cold case here that uh, they might even, as uh, the chief whip of the ANC says, uh, find nothing really in this raid that happened today? I doubt very much uh, if uh, the NPA and, uh, uh, had had that in mind, they should have not even attempted to raid the home of uh, the speaker. There is no doubt in anybody's mind that uh, there is a prima facie evidence. All what is needed now is for them to go to court and let the judges have the last word on the issue. But it, if you look at this, this is the policy of the ANC of always protecting their own instead of looking at the issues of national interest. You will recall that this story was all over the papers, in the media. But the president had the guts to remove the minister from the defense and rewarded her with a higher position, that of being a speaker. Now, this is going to be an egg on his face, actually corroborating what he had said publicly that he was prepared to fall on sword, on the sword, instead of uh, allowing or telling his colleagues uh, that they are getting money from the state. So, I mean, you've got now, uh, I suppose, a number of processes that are underway, those being uh, of the uh, NPA and those being of, of Parliament. How far 
is the Parliament Ethics Committee, as far as you know, uh, in, in its investigation? I'm not even interested in that uh, toothless body because it's also dominated by the ANC. There's nothing you can expect from there. What we should be looking at now is let's allow the law enforcement agencies, the NPA, to finish their work and table and, and arrest or ask people to come to court. Yeah. And then we watch the game. So you, you would say cause for the speaker to step aside or step down from the position uh, while she's being investigated, neither here nor there for you? Well, it makes sense if one has to say we do not have a contract with the speaker. Balance of probabilities is sufficient enough for her to be recalled by her party or that parliament to ask her to go and, uh, and stay at home, she cannot preside over the process, processes of parliament while the, there is this dark cloud hanging over her shoulder. So the party which is on trial as we speak is the president and the ANC right now. So it's up to them, but uh, I have confidence in the law enforcement agencies for the work they have done so far, even to say, let's go and raid this house. And then after the having raid the house, because the target, I told you, target was finished long time ago. Yeah. But she has been running all over the show, go to France and then USA and so on. But right now, if I were in her boots, I would just go and hand myself to the police and say, here am I, touch me and uh, let's go to court and go I'll be able to put my side of the story. Yeah. It seems though that the whistleblower case is also not moving, I mean, since the arrest in 2020 and, and uh, the release on, on, on bail of 80,000 rands, not much is happening as far as that case is concerned. Is that not raising a concern for you? No, I don't know what you are talking about. So you can ask, uh, I've never talked about that, the case you are referring to. The case I'm dealing with here, which I reported to the police, is the case involving the speaker, and the lady whose name has been mentioned. Yeah, that's the case that so, I'm referring to, the, the case of the lady who's, who was arrested. When was she arrested? In 2020. For this case? For, no, uh, for, for, for representations that are related to this particular matter. Uh, so the story is that the contract that she got, of course, via the... The, the facilitation by the minister would have also in, in involved fraudulent documents and, and so on and so forth. And that case is seemingly not going anywhere. I'm sure if the law enforcement agencies have done their investigation, they can also jointly charge her for that. Leave that to the prosecutors, the NPA and the courts. As far then as... Uh, what is going to happen now? I mean, the term of this parliament comes to an end, ostensibly in the next two months. Um, the calls for the National Assembly Speaker to be there or not to be there are almost seemingly um, quiet, in a sense, because in two months she'll be out. She's already said she has no interest in coming back. I'm not interested in, 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 in getting involved in that argument. That's a frivolous argument. What we are focusing now is for the law enforcement agencies to finalize their case and charge her, whether it's after elections or before elections, is immaterial. What we need is the money of the SAMDF to be returned back. Those troops there are not even having good uniform. And then you have ministers who are allegedly extorting the suppliers to the defense force. This, the picture is bigger than what we are talking about here. 
you, you seem to be so confident in the NPA getting this right. What, what gives you that, that degree of confidence when we know that uh, there are many other cases that would have had to be pulled back by the NPA because they, they, they seem to have bungled them uh, quite monumentally? It's because I told you, but you don't, if you, if you, if you don't want to listen. I said the target has long been finalized. But there was a political interference to say, hold on, you can't do it now. You can't do it before elections. Or at least let SONA pass. Then after SONA, you can arrest them. General, I appreciate it. I said that. Yeah, yeah, indeed. In, 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 indeed, you did. You did earlier on, even uh, when I spoke to you. All right, let's leave it there. Thank you very much for coming on. Uh, that's UDM leader there. Thank you very much. Bandu Olomisa giving his reaction to the session seizure conducted at the Speaker's home uh, earlier today.